Hey guys, Andy here with Fish Electronics in Nisswa, located in the Brainerd Lakes area. Today we're going to take you step by step on how to install a sonar on your boat, starting from the back of the boat, the transom with the transducers, running everything up and doing the final connections up on the console. Okay, first things first, we're going to we're gonna cut open this box and see exactly what we have in here. We're gonna unpackage everything and uh, kind of separate and sort things, lay them out on the boat as the way we would be installing them. So in the box, we got our gimbal bracket. We got our owner's manual and instructions. We got a bag of hardware. Here we got our power cord and some gimbal knobs and our transducer. So when I'm installing a sonar, the first thing I like to do is unpackage everything, start assembling the transducer brackets, and when I'm doing an actual install, I start from the back of the boat and work my way forward. First thing you wanna do is unpackage, get, the, get all the shrink wrap or the cellophane off of your transducer cord. And if you just pull it like that, you're gonna end up with a bunch of twists. So what I like to do is roll it out. Just simply roll it out and you eliminate a lot of the twists and kinks that are going to happen when you're pulling it through the boat. And it gets a little tedious doing this, but believe me, uh, at the end of the day, it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're doing that. Okay, with that done, we'll put our bracket, we'll mount our bracket onto the top of the transducer. Now, looking at it, not quite sure which way it mounts on the boat. This bracket will only fit on the transducer one way and you'll notice these six holes are lining up. So this is the back, this is the front of the transducer, this will go toward the transom of the boat. So when installing the transducer bracket on the transducer, you'll notice in your hardware pack there's six Phillips machine head screws and a tiny little uh, lock washer. So what, you, what I like to do is I start all six of them. So not all transducers are going to be exactly like this, but a lot of the principles we're doing today uh, are going to relate to other, other brands of sonars, transducers. Uh, so if you kind of read your instructions when you're doing it uh, and watch this video, it'll all kind of come into play. Once I get all my screws started, I'll take an impact drill and I'll snug them up. Now you don't want to go crazy with this thing. Just give it one or two clicks just to make sure you uh, flatten that uh, lock washer on there. And now we got the plate mounted to the top of a transducer. So the next thing that I like to do in our hardware pack again, I believe these are 13 millimeter. Uh, we'll throw a washer on there. We'll put the plate, the mounting plate onto the bracket. Put another washer on the inside. And I just get the nut started on it. Now in that hardware pack, there's these three other screws that are sent to mount the transducer to the actual boat. We're going to be putting transducer boards on the back of this boat so we won't be using that and we'll get into all that later so I'm just going to set those aside for right now. Next thing I like to do is I like to snug these up and we'll do that right now. So I snug them up to the point where I get rid of the wobble in there but I'm still allowed this adjustability. So when I hold it up to the boat, the transducer will stay parallel to where I want it. Um, but I still have the ability to adjust a little bit and adjust it down when I'm drilling my screws. So right now that's ready to go on to a transducer board onto the back of the boat. All right, so in this particular installation, we're gonna be adding another transducer along with the side imaging transducer. Uh, it's an XNT14 HWT uh, high and wide transducer. So basically it's our high speed skimmer pickup that's going to give us dual spectrum chirp. So we're going to go ahead and unbox that and put it up. So when you're unpackaging this guys, uh, it's careful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend taking a knife and cutting that film just so you don't nick the, the wire. Take the time and unwrap that cellophane off of that cord. And then again, like we mentioned earlier, Take the time to unwind that transducer cord to get rid of any uh, twists and, and kinks that might happen if you just pull the coil straight out. So in our hardware pack from that high speed transducer, we have our stainless steel bracket. Little Allen wrench. Some fasteners and some washers. So 
So you'll notice these two, oh, what do you want to call them, gears maybe. Uh, there's two different sides to them. And what I like to do, and it usually works out in most boat installations, is there's a little ear on it. And then there's a little raised bump on this transducer. I like to line that ear up with that raised bump on the transducer. And in most cases, that works out pretty good as far as adjustability to mount for a correct installation on that transducer. So we'll go washer first, then a rubber washer. Slide it through, rubber washer, stainless steel washer, and then the nylock nut that comes with it. I do like to put a dab of anti-seize on there just to keep things free. And again, like the, like the side imaging inducer, I like to tighten it to the point where it'll stay, but it, I can still move it up or down a little bit. It's a little loose. A couple more and then we got it. There, so that'll stay when I'm mounting it, but I can still pivot it up and down if I need to. So before we actually mount the transducers on this board, we're gonna jump to the other side of the boat and put another transducer board on there. And the reason we're doing that is we're gonna be installing two side imaging transducers for the particular head unit that we're putting on the dash. And the reason being is through a configuration of Y cables, we're gonna be picking up the left side imaging beam to the left of the motor the right side imaging beam and the down imaging beam from the side imaging transducer on the right side of the motor. And then we talked about that high speed transducer. We're also going to be putting that on this particular board. So with the high speed transducer mounted, you're going to get optimal high speed reading. And then with the two separate side imaging transducers, we won't get any interference from a lower unit when the motor's trimmed all the way down. So you'll notice the first board we put on we kind of kept it in line. The screw line is kind of in line with this, with the line of bolts on the transom. We're gonna get this, the transducer board on the left side of the boat here as close to that as we can. Now we got a drain hole here, so we'll just almost bump right up to that. Hold it that half inch up off the bottom of the boat. Go ahead and mark our holes. Drill them out. On some boats, and this one doesn't have it, but some boats, this rivet line or, or, or bolt line, if you want to call it, will go all the way down to the transom and you'll have bolts or rivets where you want to mount your transducer board. So what I do is I'll mark it, I'll hold it, let's say we have a, a bolt right there. What I'll do is I'll mark it, drill my holes, and then I take two drill bits and put them in the holes that we just drilled. And let's say, for example, we have a rivet right here. I'll take just a little dab of this anti-seize and I'll put a dab of that on the head of this rivet. And we'll do it right above here so you kind of can see what I'm talking about. We'll just put a little dab there, okay? So again, we have a bolt right there. I'll slide my transducer board onto the drill bits just so my holes all line up and I'll just push it tight and pull it back out. Okay, so now that's where that little dot there represents where a rivet might be in, in a different style of boat. So then what I do is I take a Forstner bit and I'll just drill out that dot to the depth of what the head is protruding out of the back of the boat and then that'll keep our transducer board nice and tight to the transom. There, now our other transducer board is mounted, ready to go. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and mount our high speed skimmer on the back of this boat. Remember earlier we mentioned we're gonna try to avoid any rivet lines or strake lines. So by looking down the bottom of the boat, this would be a good spot to mount that transducer and clear of any rivet lines, strake lines. What I like to do is what I'll call the low side of the transducer. Keep that about a quarter inch below the bottom of the boat. 
So you get down, eyeball it, it looks good. I've already looked at the way the boat is sitting on the trailer and that's pretty close to how it's gonna sit on the water. I made our transducer parallel to that. I'm gonna hold it there, I'm gonna mark these two holes. So I marked our holes, what I'm gonna do now is drill, drill a pilot hole for those. And earlier we mentioned we're gonna get rid of the mounting hardware that came with the transducer. The reason why is those screws that came with it are longer than this board is thick, so they would actually penetrate the boat. So what I got is just a three quarter inch number 10 Phillips stainless steel screw with a washer, and we'll be using those to mount the high speed skimmer onto our transducer board. And again, I won't drive them home. I'll get them almost snug. I'll put them both, get them both started, and then again, I'll eyeball that for height. That's exactly where I want it. Now I'll drive them home. Okay, so our bracket's installed. The next step is just to tighten up the bolt we put in there earlier. Okay, high speed skimmer's done. Now we're gonna move on to our side imaging transducer. Uh, not so concerned about the strakes and the rivet lines. Uh, the one thing I am concerned about would be when this motor comes all the way down, you wanna make sure that when that motor turns, the lower unit isn't gonna hit this. We have a jack plate on, it's set back, what, eight inches or so, so I know we're gonna be clear when that lower unit is all the way down or when that motor's trimmed all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and mount that. A Couple things to keep in mind, you wanna make sure your high speed skimmer isn't gonna obstruct the right beams for your side imaging. Okay, so looking down, we're clear there. The other thing I like to do is now with the side imaging inducer, instead of the bottom side being a quarter inch down below the bottom of the boat, I like to have the top side a quarter inch below the bottom of the boat. That'll put the bottom side up above the bottom of the boat, when you, but when you're on plane, you're going fast enough anyway, you're side imaging, you're not gonna get an optimal reading. So that's kind of how I do that, plus it kind of protects an expensive transducer from hitting anything that's floating in the water. So again, I'll eyeball that. And usually what I do is I just mark my top hole. So here's the reason why I only drill the top hole is I'll put that in there and I'll drive it home and get it tight. Okay, I'll adjust it for height, which looks good to me. And I wanna see if it's parallel or not. And that looks good to me. So then I'll bring it down. And then I'll punch these two holes right here. Again, I won't drive it home quite yet. I'll get my screw started. Double check for height, that looks good. Double check for parallel, that looks good. Now I'll drive them home. Okay, so the last step we need to do is get our 13 millimeter. And I tip these up just a fuzz because usually the back of the boat is gonna sit a hair lower in the front of the boat, so that'll should keep that transducer parallel in the water. Get our bolt snugged up. There, now our side imaging transducer is mounted. So our next step is gonna be to, with a few zip ties and fasteners, run our cords up to the console. 
Now that the transducers are mounted, we're going to go ahead with a little bit of cable management. With three transducers on, uh, three cords, 18, 20 feet long, uh, things can get uh, um, become a mess in a hurry. So we're just going to start zip tying and cable tying some of this stuff up. Okay, we got a zip tie started. Now I'm just going to snug them up. I have this zip tie gun. What this does is it tightens it and then cuts it flush to get rid of that sharp edge. And you can certainly use just a side cutter, but you'll never cut it close enough to eliminate a sharp edge there. Depending on the thickness of the cables is going to determine which one I run up first. Now I like to get at least one cable tie on the boat to get all this tightened up nice. And if you'll notice the side imaging transducer, it's kind of in between, so you can't really get it tight enough. You know, that's going to slide. This quarter inch is too tight and they don't make one, or at least I can't get them that are just fit it nice like they do on this 2D transducer. You know, that's kind of tight and when you tighten your screw down, you're not squishing or damaging that, uh, the exterior sheathing of the cord. And we're going to screw that. Now when I silicone that, this is what I like to do. I like to put a little dab over our screw hole. And then I put a dab on the actual screw itself just to ensure that that hole we just drilled is sealed up good. Okay, our side imaging trans or our 2D sonar transducer cord is mounted good. So with that now we'll just uh, zip tie our side imaging cord to the smaller 2D cord that we already have tightened and fastened to the boat. There, with that, our transducers are fastened securely to the boat, ready to go. All right, guys, so our next step in this sonar installation is we're going to run all these transducer cables along with an additional power cable up to the console of this boat. Uh, so we're going to open it up, take some hatches and compartments off, run our cables, uh, string our wires, our, our power cord to the dash. Uh, the reason we're adding the power cord is uh, a couple reasons. Number one, we want clean power going to that head unit all the time. So by hooking directly to the battery, it's going to eliminate units freezing up, shutting down, locking up when the outboard is cranked. Uh, the other thing it does when you're isolating in that power is you, you're not pulling from the factory fuse panel, maybe picking up a little interference RF noise from the fuse bus. Uh, it also makes troubleshooting down the road a lot easier. Instead of trying to find a fuse buried in the boat somewhere, you just follow the power line you ran earlier that's going right to the battery where you should have a fuse holder. Check that fuse. If you got power there, then you need to keep moving closer to the head unit and see what the issue is. Right, so the first step we're going to do when we're stringing cables is uh, we got to open the boat up and, and uh, access some of the, the runways in the boat. So in this particular boat, we're going to remove this back panel here and this side panel, probably the the throttle assembly and that should open the boat up enough where we can uh, uh, get our hands through and, and run all these wires up to the council. I find that if you just use a regular drill with a screw tip in it, you strip a lot of the screw heads. So an impact driver seems to work well. Um, not necessary, but the angle driver um, works well too to get in some of these tight places. Uh, so far, we uh, haven't used it too much on this disassemble, but, uh, but I'm sure we will at some point.
all boats are going to come apart a little bit different. Um, this is this is what we got to do to open up this boat. Uh, the boat you might uh, be digging into, it'll be similar. All the principles will be the same, um, but it isn't going to be exactly what we're doing here today. All right, one thing to keep in mind uh, when you do an installation where you have two side imaging transducers, they're side specific when you plug them into either the unit or the, the Y cable. So this one on the right side, we're, I'm just going to put a piece of red tape on the right transducer cord back by the boat. And then I'm going to also put one on the plug end of it. So when it comes time to do the final installation, we know exactly which one is the right and which one is the, is the left. So just a little uh, tech tip to put in the back pocket and remember when you're doing something like this. Okay guys, in this boat there's two rigging tubes in here. One was empty, so we utilized that empty tube to run our three transducer wires through, uh, basically to isolate them. In that second tube uh, is where we're gonna pull our power wire and the reason we're doing that is we're going to try to isolate our power wire that's going to our head unit away from those transducer cables just to keep the interference or the RF noise down to a minimum. Guys, a neat little tool that you, you'll find very useful when you're rigging a boat is just a simple fish tape. Um, we didn't need it to pull our transducer cords on this boat because our rigging tube was, was empty and it was big enough. Some of them get pretty tight, so if you string this through the rigging tube, through the boat, and then tape your transducers onto the other end and pull it through, uh, can really be a lifesaver when you're pulling wires. Occasionally, uh, when I'm doing pulling multiple cables, I'll just kind of tie them all together. And hopefully I can reach in there with my hands and do it. If not, I'll have to use a fish tape, but then you're just tying your fish tape or grabbing it one, one end of the cord. And then you, uh, if you can reach it, you can pull all three through the boat. All right, guys, so we just got done running or stringing all of our transducer cables through the boat. We ran our heavy gauge 8-2 conductor from the battery box up to under the dash, and we, we uh, roughed in the rest of our power supplies going up to the bow of the boat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build our own sub panel. We mentioned about the running directly to the battery. Because of the number of units we have going on in this boat, we're gonna create a, install our own sub panel, uh, which essentially is created, you're still running all our powers directly to the battery, um, but just in a shortened version of it. So when this power system is complete, essentially all the components power supplies will be run directly to the battery through this six gang sub panel. So we have both positive and negative terminals on here. Uh, our components will be hooked into these with our fuses, which will be labeled. And then we'll have the main, uh, main power leads running from this sub panel all the way back to the starting battery. So I'm just putting the, the correct size fuses. If you look into your owner's manual, it'll tell you what size fuse you need to run. Um, so that uh, 15, we're throwing a seven and a half inch and the two units on the bow calls for a five, five amp fuse. So that's, that's the reason why we're putting in the size we are. Okay, so we just got done fastening all of our power supplies or our, call it, let's call it our home runs to our fuse panel or our sub panel. Um, I dropped the power cable for this dash mounted unit through the rigging hole and also hooked, hooked that into our sub panel. Um, in this sub panel here comes, there's a little label here, there's little stickers to label our, uh, our components on it. So on the cover, there's a little indentation for the stickers. So when we ran all these powers, I labeled them just with the magic marker so I know which, which wire is going to what component. So then I just labeled the labels you know, to correspond to that. So we got a five port switch up front. We got a dash Solix, which is mounting right here. We're gonna have a bow 12 inch unit. So I labeled that bow 12-1, and then we're gonna have a second 12 inch unit. So that's bow 12-2. Um, also ran another power cable for a mega 360 transducer. And then we added a future one, which we aren't gonna put a fuse in it, but we do have an extra power wire up there in case down the, down the road we decide to add another component. We already got a home run ran to it. So now we'll stick our stickers on the, on the cover here. We'll drop our fuses in, and then we'll go ahead and mount our sub panel up underneath the dash. So this is a new boat with uh, all new components on it. You might be running into a situation where you're just adding one unit. You wouldn't necessarily have that. If you do have it, tie your power into this in your sub panel. If you don't have a sub panel, you're only adding one unit, maybe two. You can just run your dedicated power supply from the head unit directly right to the battery. All right, so we have our transducer cord ran, we have our ethernet cord ran, we have our power cord ran hooked up to our sub panel. Next step that I like to do is mount the actual gimbal bracket. So what we're planning on doing, we're gonna hold it up there, we're gonna center it over the steering wheel. 
And we're going to hold it back a little bit from this edge so we can get a big size like a fender washer behind it. Uh, we're going to center it up there and then just, just mark our holes. So I got my holes marked. And then before I do any drilling, I'm going to reach underneath the dash and make sure everything is clear. There isn't any wires, uh, hydraulic hoses, uh, anything, any wiring or anything that we could damage if we, if we uh, poke a drill bit through there. So we'll just reach up underneath here. Both sides look good, so uh, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and uh, drill a couple holes. So when drilling any hole, whether it's in fiberglass, or aluminum, stainless steel, whatever, just uh, nice and slow, nice and easy, steady pressure seems to do the best job. Okay, anytime you're drilling a hole in fiberglass, it's always a good idea to countersink that, the hole after you're done drilling it before you mount anything. What this countersink bit is doing, it's actually getting rid of the 90 degree cut even though it's a round circle, you still have a 90 degree angle. And by countersinking it, you're rounding out the edges of it, eliminating that 90 degree and make it more of a 45 uh, to prevent any uh, spider cracks or chipping going on. So what we use, guys, uh, to mount our gimbal bracket to the boat, we just used a, just a quarter 20 stainless steel uh, bolt with a Phillips head, number three head. And then we just used a fender washer and a brass nylock uh, on the bottom just to snug everything up. So keep everything from uh, prevent any rusting or corrosion down the road. One thing to mention, uh, this is a pretty big unit. This is a 15 inch unit we're putting on here. So you need something pretty substantial to make sure uh, everything is fast and securely. Uh, fortunately, when they manufacture this bolt, they have a plate of aluminum underneath our fiberglass. So that's gonna make for a solid mount once we're all said and done here. So now that our gimbal bracket is mounted, we're gonna attach our cords to the head unit. So there's our power cord. We got our ethernet cord. And then our transducer cord. With those all tightened up, we're gonna drop it into the gimbal bracket and the installation will be done. So earlier in, in the installation process, we ran this uh, 8 gauge wire which is powering our sub panel or our 6 gang fuse bus which is ultimately powering the sonar head units. Uh, what we're at right now, the stage of the installation at, we're ready to hook this up to our battery. Now if you're doing a 1Z, 2Z installation, hooking it directly up to your main starting battery is the way to go. Because of the complexity of, of this system, we have a dedicated battery that's going to run all of our electronics. So what we have here is we have our, our negative and positive going right to our, our sub panel. But in between that sub panel, we have a master on and off switch. So when we're done at the end of the day, boat's on the trailer, you put it in the garage, you go through your uh, storage procedure, you plug in your onboard charger, you can also bomb the power going to your sub panel and cut all the power just to eliminate any phantom draw down the road when your boat's at idle. Uh, one thing I should mention is uh, in order to protect our main power line, I installed a, a 50 amp auto reset circuit breaker. So if anything would happen, you get a cut of nick, something happens with the electrical line going to our sub panel, this, this wire is protected uh, and that'll prevent any, any fire damage or electrical damage that might happen. So if you don't have a sub panel installed in your boat, you should still protect that wire. If you were just putting a single unit on your dash, running the main power to your dedicated uh, starting battery, just look at the owner's manual and, and just install a regular ATO fuse holder and hook that directly to your battery and that would protect that line and the unit in case something might happen. So we're going to go ahead now, hook up these power batteries and uh, see how we came out on that uh, install of the head unit. So just a quick recap of what we did. We uh, unboxed our, our sonar unit, we mounted our transducers, we strung the transducers through the boat, we strung a power cable through the boat and uh, hooked everything up did our fuse protection, our cable management. Now it's time to hit the power button and see how we did. So we got power to our head unit, it's powered up. Um, now we're gonna go through a setup process on it when the menu prompts us. And uh, I guess just from start to finish, that's how you install your fish finder.